Hello friends, welcome to a new podcast episode. My name is Madison and this is where I talk about mostly my knitting and any other crafts I get up to, which is usually spinning and now weaving. And it's, um, I always start by saying it's been a minute because I have been really horrible at filming on any sort of schedule. So apologies. I'm hoping to get back into a routine this fall and winter. The summer was, you know, craziness. Everyone's going everywhere. Did a lot of traveling, a lot of seeing friends and family, and now I'm kind of ready to settle back into a fall routine. I'm like missing the back to school <laughs> vibes. Obviously, I'm not in school anymore, but um, trying to find kind of like a new routine with the season shift. We finally have some nice like fall autumnal feeling weather here in New York, although I think it's supposed to heat back up next week, but I'm going to pretend like that's not going to happen because it is finally sweater weather. And I've been wearing one of my, um, I guess it's not really a recent finished object, but it is one sweater that I finished this year, I finished it earlier this spring and just kind of when this the weather was starting to get too warm to wear it. So I've pulled it out and have been kind of wearing it nonstop. But this is my last long, or is it long last? I always get it mixed up. Um, but I will put the Ravel Ravelry link below in case you're interested in checking it out. It is by Albina McLaughlin, um, and it is an all over fisherman's rib pullover. Um, and it kind of has a very nice, um, I don't know that this is technically, I guess this is maybe a raglan. I don't know, the, the yoke increasing is very interesting. I had never done anything like it before because it kind of, kind of comes off the shoulder um, in a very, pretty way makes a nice increase there um but it's super cozy mine is very oversized i uh when i was wearing this the other day i was just starting to think to myself that i need to make another one and i would love to do a size down i think i knit the size three um on the recommended needles i think i remember using a us nine Again, this was like six months ago, so check my Ravelry to be sure. Um, and then I made mine in Newtoden yarn. So it's two strands of Newtoden um, held together in the color Morker, I believe, which is one of my favorite colors that they've <laughs> put out. It's very like purple, but has like a nice red undertone. So I don't know, it's kind of... Nudidin is hard to translate on screen. I feel like you can see a lot more depth in the yarn when you're in person. But, um, so yeah, it's very light, which is amazing, but very warm. So I feel like I'm probably gonna wear this sweater to death. Um, so I need to make another one <laughs> so I can kind of start balancing it out. But, um, what have I been up to? It's been, uh, let's see, I think my last episode was in July. Yes, it was right before I was about to go on a week-long vacation to Montana, um, where I did a lot of knitting, which was amazing. And ever since then, I've been doing a lot of knitting, focusing on Rhinebeck sweaters, and Rhinebeck is only a few weeks away now, so that is very exciting. I'm getting very, very excited about it. Um, and I have also kind of done some diving into weaving, I guess. <laughs> it's taken a um, chunk of my brain is now dedicated to weaving, and. I've been acquiring all these books about weaving and, um, you know, trying all these like weaving specific yarns, a lot of like cotton and linen. But first, let's talk about knitting <laughs> because that is what we're here for. They have an almost finished object. I'm going to call it a finished object because um, 
it's basically finished other than it needs to be blocked and have the ends woven in but it is my mcal from last year i don't know if you were expecting that because i have not touched it um or i had not touched it since january of this year and then maybe about a month ago i um it was around the time when Stephen West started posting info for his upcoming MCAL. And I was like, ugh, it's called GeoGradient. I was loving all of the vibes and energy and everything around it. And I mean, that's also Stephen West's personality. I feel like he's, he's so fun. So he was posting about it and I was like, ugh. I really want to do this one. I don't know why. I I just want to be a part of GeoGradient and really try to go for it this year. Because last year I kind of I had plan. You know, I it kind of took me by surprise. <laughs> I guess last year's MCAL. I had a lot of other projects going on, and I just didn't plan correctly to like really dedicate um, the like time for it as the clues were being released and I think that's that's half the fun is doing it with everyone and at the same time and during the mystery knit along month period you know so long story long I decided that I wanted to join the MCAL again this year but felt like I needed to at least try to finish my MCAL from last year before this new one rolled around so I kind of hyper fixated on this for like two weeks I had gotten through the first two clues and there were four clues last year I I don't know if there's four clues every year or not but so I had essentially gotten through half of <laughs> of the knit and um, and yeah I dug it out I had it like tucked away in a cabinet was like prepared to never look at it ever again pulled it out and finished it in like, I think it took me two weeks to finish it. Um, so I'm so happy to have it done. Is this something that I will wear out and about? No, probably not. But I could maybe, I could maybe use it as a wrap. I don't know. It is like a good kind of like shoulder wrap size like something like this <laughs> maybe not I did the early bind off option here and I still can't believe I got through this section to even begin with it was insane this whole thing was insane but I really actually enjoyed finishing it and knitting a fingered weight shawl. I don't know. I, it got me really excited for this new MCAL. I really loved this yarn. It was all, this was a kit from Stephen and Penelope um, last year, obviously. And it's a Danish, yes, Danish hand dyed uh, yarn company that I call it Sislergit, but I don't know if that is the correct pronunciation, but that's how I say it in my mind. Um, single ply, fingering weight, hand dyed. These are all three colors together. Um, so I'm a big fan of the yarn, which I think also makes it really fun. For this year's MCAL Geo Gradient, I ordered some yarn from Sislergit um, directly. I definitely took inspo from Steven and Penelope's kits that they put together and there were so many really pretty ones, but I was determined to come up with my own color combination because I want to get really good at like color theory and combining colors. I wanna feel really confident in my color choices because sometimes I'm like, ugh. I don't know. This is my only acquisitions section for today, and then I'll get to my whips. But I had this skein of yarn left over from last year. So this pink color from last year's kit 
was the correct color for the kit, but there was a little mishap and I was sent this skein with my kit uh, by accident. And then Steven and Penelope kindly sent me the correct one. Um, so I've had this thing around for a year and I kind of was, you know, came to the decision of, I wanna use the same brand. I really love this base. It's the Merino Singles. For the Geo Gradient, you need four skeins, one of each color, so four colors. And so yeah, I was like, okay, I've got one. I'll just find three other colors and build my palette around this skein. And this is what I came up with. Da -da -da. So, yay, I'm excited. Um, I feel like these are pretty similar, but in terms of like color value, but I think it'll be nice. Um, so yeah, there's a little color variation. It's not a 100% tonal color palette. I am excited and it starts next week and I need to get a few of my whips casted off, bound off before I start this. I mean, I will start it on the day that it starts because I don't want to be left behind. Um, and I want to try to keep up, but I'm on a mission to finish my two Rhinebeck sweaters, which I will talk about now. <laughs> this one is my, what I'm calling my Rhinebeck sweater number one, um, just because I started it first <laughs> before the other one. And here she is. We've got one sleeve and a body and we're almost done with sleeve number two. And then I'm gonna put a collar on it. Um, probably pretty similar to this ribbing which is just one by one twisted rib and I've got the little shapes up there so I can't remember where I was exactly in my last podcast but I think I was still in the middle of the color work oh my gosh it looks so cute there's so many sheep I showed this to my friend Hannah and because I was like oh I'm put some sheep on it and she was like oh that's a entire flock of sheep that's not just like a few sheep so <laughs> it's just my flock of sheep sweater i guess is what i will call it i believe i talked about this sweater quite a bit in my last episode but the quick and dirty of it is it is a self-drafted color work but it's based on the alpen glow by andrew mowry um, in terms of like stitch counts and kind of general fit. Um, I kind of strayed away with the ribbing um, and the sleeve. I did a little bit more of a, less of a tapered sleeve and more of kind of a, I did a few decreases as you can see by my markers still there, but then I did a little bit of a balloon sleeve with a rapid decrease right before the ribbing. Um, so that kind of strays away from the Alpen Glow, and yeah, and I came up with my own color work chart, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. It's knitted in Pearl Soho Good Wool is everything except for this blue fuzzy, which is kind of hard to tell that it's fuzzy, but this blue up here is, um magpie fibers plume base i think it's like their cashmere one um held double i had it in stash and when i was putting the colors together i was like oh i think this is actually a really good color combo and then this contrast color um and this down here is some of my hand spun which yeah, I talked about it in the last episode, but it gets a little low contrast in some parts, so I don't know that it's as defined as I want it to be, but I'm still liking it. Um, 
So that is hand spun. It was a braid by 316 Dye Studio. 316 Dye Studio. Um, they're based in Wichita, Kansas, which is not too far from my hometown, which is exciting. I've been plugging away at this last sleeve and I've been using DPNs, which is not something I usually do, but I've been enjoying it. It might be because of the yarn combo. I don't know. I really, really love the Pearl Soho Good Wool. It's a sport weight, fingering sport weight. Um, comes in really pretty colors. Has kind of like a nice heathering to it and blooms up really nicely after being blocked. And I want to knit everything in sport weight <laughs> and specifically in pearl soho good wool now so i am very excited about this sweater i don't know what day i'll probably wear it if i finish it which i think i'm close enough i've got enough time i can finish it um and weather permitting i think i will probably be wearing that on the friday of rhinebeck so if you are also going and you see me in my flock of sheep <laughs> sweater um please say hi <laughs> i'm so excited for rhinebeck last year was my first time going and i only went to woolen folk on friday um because there's woolen folk indian tangled cake palooza yeah there's like the three big kind of like pre Rhinebeck events. This year I have tickets to all three, <laughs> which might make for a hectic day, but I'm excited. I definitely don't think I'm gonna do as much shopping. Well, I always say things and then I come back and I'm like, remember when I said that? Just kidding. Um, but this year I really, really feel like I don't need to do that much shopping. I'm really excited to just see what's out there and be inspired by everything that Rhinebeck brings. I really feel like I have enough yarn right now and I have enough projects in the queue still that I'm, I don't need to do any major, major shopping, I don't think. Um, but I am also, I feel like if I do any shopping, it's definitely going to be more towards like the farm yarn, raw fleece. I'm trying to convince my sister to, to split a fleece with me, so I think, I think she will. <laughs> um, okay, but my other Rhinebeck sweater, I'm very, very excited about, and it also has some hand spun in it. I don't think I had finished, No, I don't think I had done anything. I had I didn't have any of this sweater in my last episode. Um, so it's all brand new to the podcast. <laughs> and here she is. Ah! Oh! Yay! This is my sheep camp. And I'm very excited about it. Obviously, I have a little bit more to go on this one, but it is a bigger gauge. Uh, it is technically a DK weight, and I'm knitting it on a US 7. So it feels like it's been going faster than my sport weight <laughs> sweater on my US 4 needles. For the yarn, the main color is Farmer's Daughter Fibers, uh, Pishkin DK, which is 100% Montana and Wyoming, maybe, um, Rambouillet. So it's super soft, super squishy, and hand dyed by FDF. This color is obviously yellow, but it has a green tone in some some lights, which I think I like the little bit more of a green vibe. I don't usually go for yellow, but the contrast color I actually had first, it is um, hand spun that I spun from a bat from Artifacts of Appreciation. Yes, that's it. And it was a 
bat and a braid kind of pairing I if I remember I'll try to put in pictures of what the bat <laughs> and the braid looked like um, but it created this really really pretty uh, color combo I think so the bat the braid was all kind of a solid like purple and the bat is um, more of that kind of multicolored and shiny uh, ply that you see coming through so it's just a two ply I spun it like I usually do which is a worsted uh, short forward draft and did a two ply obviously and I had let's see oh I forgot I have a little bit left over I cut the color work a few rows short because I knew I was going to run out. So um, these last few rows are, it's not what is really in the pattern, but we improvised and actually I think it worked out because the yoke depth feels pretty long already. So I think if I were to knit this again, I would take out a little triangle from this section. Um, and I think that would help it maybe if you were looking for a tighter fit. I'm a little worried that the yoke is going to hit slightly too low and we'll see. But it'll be comfy and soft. But this is some of the yarn <laughs> that's left over. So one ply is just the solid like purple. And that was, I believe, BFL. I'm pretty sure. And then the bat was a combo of a bunch of things. Had... Um, some it had something of a breed that i had never heard of before um but it was super soft and then a bunch of like silk and i think there was like merino in there i can't remember what was in the bat but i loved spinning this and um i'm sad that i only have this much left over because i only had that one bat you know with the braid combo so I'll never be able to recreate it which makes this sweater feel extra special because it's like this is a one-of-a-kind contrast color and then this yarn um, I actually picked up from the FDF store when I was in Montana this summer um, so that was really fun my mom and my sister are also knitting sheep camps so we can all wear them to rhyme back together i'm very excited theirs are in different colors different yarns um which is what we did last year too with our winter wood sweaters we all did the same pattern but picked our own colors i really hope that it's not hot at rhinebeck um but i think we'll probably wear this to the actual sheep and wool festival on Saturday. Um, I'm excited to see everyone's sweaters on the hill and I feel like the Andrea Mowry meetup is going to be huge. I'm not partaking in the tessellated um, Rhinebeck sweater this year but I remember the Alpenglow meetup last year being like so many people. But yeah. Um, but it's fun to see everyone's versions and it's a lot of really good color inspo. So maybe I'll just, yeah. So I'm gonna have to be taking notes for color combos that I like. <laughs> um, okay, so that is my main focus. <sighs> so Rhinebeck sweaters are priority number one until the MCAL stars. I mean, they're priority number one until I finish them for Rhinebeck. But with MCAL starting next week, I'm like powering through these sleeves. I'm not going to get stuck on Sleeve Island. I think last year I finished one of my Rhinebeck sweaters like the day before we left. And mm, I just don't want to do that again. <laughs> we wanted to have a little bit more time to like really finish them and like block everything and polish and whatnot so one other whip that's also new 
I think this is the last whip that I'll really talk about today because I mean, I have at least 10 things, 10 whips on the needles. Oh wait, no, I have another whip that I wanna talk about, but it's small. Um, I went through the other day and like wrote down every single whip that I have on the needles because my big goal, which feels a little bit like a stretch goal, is to end this year with next to no whips still on the needles. I have a lot of things that have just been, they've gotten tucked away and haven't been picked back up again. So I think it's time to just get everything off. I wanna start the new year with like a minimal amount of projects going on because I have been just going cast on crazy this whole time and not finishing things. So I want to, I want to finish my projects. Anyway, what was I, why did I start talking about that? Oh, because I'm not going to show things that I haven't been working on, um, obviously, but they will come back. There are so many things that I have not forgotten about, like my big cozy Cardi is still haunting me and I'm determined if I don't finish any other project I have to finish my big cozy cardi this year that is like I have to <laughs> I started it in January it needs to be done by this next January um that is a big one my pressed flower shawl is so close to being done but it has not been worked on recently so anyway but this whip that I'm very excited about is another sweater, and it is an Ingrid. I am knitting this with my friend Hannah of Pages and Pearls. You should definitely go check out her podcast. I will link it below. I'm so excited to be knitting it with her in a little micro cal, as she calls it. Hannah's is looking so much more complete <laughs> than mine is but I am very excited about where this is going. I think as soon as I finish my other Rhinebeck sweaters, I am just gonna be focusing on the MCAL and then Ingrid um, for the time being. Let me share some of the details, maybe. <laughs> that would be smart to do. Um, the yarn combo, I've had this sitting for a long time, I've had this sweater i think i had the idea of this yarn combo and pattern um a year ago or so whenever my sister knit her ingrid sweater we were gonna knit it together but then she just left me in the dust um which is fine i was probably working on my twist and turns or something <laughs> i was distracted with other things so i but i had purchased the yarn and just had it sitting around and I had told Hannah this a while ago and then um, last month she was like, oh, I really want to knit one. Should we just cast on together? And I was like, yes, I am so here for that. And so I pulled my yarn out. This is also Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Seems to be trending for me in this episode. Um, this is their let me look at the label. It's the singles. Whatever the fingering singles is. What is that base? Oh, it's the Soka. Soka Pie. Soka P. I forget how to say it. Um, in the colorway Dumplin'. I think I've seen this base listed as a few different weights on various sites because it could definitely pass as anywhere from like a fingering to a DK. It's very like thick and thin kind of singles, um, but really soft. It is Rambouille, yeah. So super soft. And then I paired it with their Odang, which is the Surrey, um, also from Farmer's Daughter Fibers and same colorway, Dumplin'. So it's a very nice pale, peachy, pink, beige color. Um, and I'm really 
loving how it's working up so far. So, ah, yay! And then I've got this in my little project bag that I sewed earlier this year, um, which I'm starting to feel a little bit more like I want to invest in a sewing machine again. I was feeling that way earlier this year, but decided to just hold off because I don't really need a sewing machine, but um, I do think it would be nice to like sew myself some clothes. I had told myself that if I cleared out a good portion of my stash, like I knitted it up, um, then that would mean that I had space for storing a sewing mas machine. But this last month, I have kind of made that space, but then I filled that space back up with weaving supplies. <laughs> so my last whip that I will talk about is a quick little cast on that I did, or that I started because I traveled to Texas for a weekend and it was a very quick trip. We were gonna be moving around a lot. Um, we went to San Antonio and to Austin, all within like 48 hours. I knew Texas was still gonna be warm at the time that we went and we were gonna be moving around a lot not really staying in one place for very long. So I didn't want to take a big sweater project with me because that just felt really impractical and I knew that I probably wouldn't get that much knitting done anyway. So I cast on a hat, um, which right now just looks like a tube because <laughs> that's as far as I've gotten. But it is, or it will be a Harlow hat the original, not the worsted weight. This is a fingering weight yarn. Um, in some places I feel like it's thinner than a fingering weight yarn, but it's working up really nicely. I am using a US2 needle, yeah. Um, and it's so cute, I'm so excited. It's, it's my hand spun. I haven't really knit with my hand spun like this much i've used it as contrast colors in a bunch of things not in a bunch in like a handful i really haven't knit with that much hand spun yet i feel like i'm just recently have, am getting to the point where i'm spinning yarn that i'm also feeling really excited about to knit with because like for so long i was like uh <laughs> i guess i made yarn but I don't know what I want to make with that. Um, so this has been really fun to knit with and the color combo is just really cute. It is, or it was a braid from Nest Fiber. I am in her monthly fiber club. This is also a good segue into some of my other summer spinning. I wanted to just talk about some other spinning that I've been doing this summer because my spinning mojo has been so strong and I'm really excited about everything that I've been spinning. So these nest fiber clubs uh, were kind of building up a little bit and I think it was May or June I was got really focused in getting through quite a few of those bags of fiber. And so I started spinning them not really with any major plan in mind. I had um, signed up for a weaving workshop that I took in August and so kind of challenged myself to spin some <laughs> spin some yarn that I could weave with in that workshop. Um, so I did use some of this in that workshop and just had so much of it still left over that I was like I need to be its own thing. Plus I love this color combo, like the pink and the red um, and the purple is just so cute. So these are the other ones that I took with me to my weaving workshop. I can't remember if I've shared these. I've been using these for some more weavings 
on my table loom that I have uh, and I'm obsessed with her <laughs> and so yeah I might you know they might get knitted into something eventually but right now I'm really enjoying using them in little weavings I've been doing a lot of overshot these are also nest fiber I don't remember which months they are sometime from this year I was aiming for a fingering weight and then was really happy when it resulted in a pretty consistent fingering weight. Um, they're all just two ply. I kind of, I didn't really think too hard about the color management, kind of split each braid up however I wanted to that day and then just went for it um, and didn't take any notes either. So, <laughs> so, I don't know, but I did spin these all on my Lindrum double treadle. Uh, I have one of the, I have a fast flyer and I spun it on the biggest whirl on my fast flyer, which I feel like is a 12 to one ratio if I remember correctly. I have it taped on my, on my flyer, all of the ratios, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I was so happy with the results of these spins and it gave me a lot of confidence in my spinning to kind of start playing with really controlling um the i guess result of this spin like i yeah now i feel really confident that i can spin a specific weight um and i know what you know what kind of like levers to push and pull to in terms of changing up my wheel to get the yarn that I want to get. So yeah, but now I'm working on taking better notes and um, making little control cards so I have better documentation of what my projects are. And also I think that really helps with consistency, but... Um, so yeah, I've been loving the spinning mojo so much. Ooh, I really want to get another wheel. We'll see. I'm kind of staying hopeful that there will be something good at the used equipment sale at Rhinebeck, but I don't know. I also like look on Facebook Marketplace for fun. Um, there's a lot of spinning wheels there. I would love to have a Saxony style wheel. Um, I think that's the right name where it's like the wheel is to the side of the flyer but I also would love a shacked matchless that feels like the creme de la creme of spinning wheels I'm just curious to try it out um, so if anyone has any wheel thoughts please do share would love would love to hear i have my lindrum dt that i love so so much she was my first wheel and i pretty much only spin on her i have an ashford e-spinner 3 which i have really just been using for plying she's also a good wheel so i'm gonna keep her <laughs> she's not going anywhere um other spinning stuff sorry we're like really getting into spinning now so if you're still here Thank you for sticking around. I promise I'm almost done talking about spinning. <laughs> um, another new spinning thing for me this summer has been the Turkish spindles. I have three Turkish spindles now, two kind of like bigger ones and then one like teeny tiny little one that is super cute, um, but not the most practical, I don't think. I really enjoy the two bigger ones and I decided to try out the Turkish spindle because of Tour de Fleece. I knew I was going traveling. I wanted to keep the spinning mojo going. Um, so that was a fun challenge and learning experience and kind of surprised myself with how much I loved the results of the Turkish spindle. Obviously it takes much longer to spin on a spindle versus a treadle wheel um, or I guess any sort of wheel. I found the yarns that came off of my spindles 
just to be softer and airier and kind of lighter. It's hard to overspin on a spindle, I guess. So the result just felt like a really nice balanced and soft, <laughs> soft yarn. Um, this is Falkland dyed by Onina, I think. Um, I believe she's in Canada. So it's just really beautiful, like tonal lavender that I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. Um, and then this colorway, these are all the same braid. It's uh, Cabin Fever, I think. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Um, on BFL from Nest Fiber. And I love these colors, the blues and the browns, got some green in there, like gold and purple too. So I don't know. I was trying to think the other day of like if I could combine these, but I don't know they're really meant to be. There's the purple, but I just really love these yarns. These two little mini skeins are what came off of my like teeny tiny Turkish spindle. <laughs> They're so tiny. I have a new spend going on my Turkish spindles, but I've kind of just let that be um, its own thing. And I'm only picking it up when I really feel like spinning on it, but I'm excited for the yarn that is to come. Um, okay, last thing I wanna talk about. <laughs> I have two raw fleeces in my apartment and I've washed a little bit of both of them and I had a day probably about a month ago when I wanted to do a little fiber processing ex spinning experiment um, so I have one fin fleece and I carded up a bat and then spun it and uh, did a chain ply that was another thing I learned in the summer is how to chain ply or uh, I feel like I actually got decent at it. <laughs> so I didn't, I was just so scared of chain plying for the longest time. Um, but I just did a chain ply to make a sample three ply. And so this is my little fin skein. And then my other fleece is a Cotswold CVM Rambouillet mix. And her name was Coco Puff. This is Violet. <laughs> and so I card washed, carded up a bat, and spun the exact same way, did a chain ply um, for Cocoa Puffs sample. And then I did a bat of 50-50 of both of the fleeces, um, just to see if there was any sort of like drastic difference. Um, and actually now that I'm like holding this, I kind of like this one the best, the feel of it. I don't know. I don't know, but my plan for these, so back up a little bit. I want to spin a sweater's quantity of, from fleece that I've processed for the mandolin cardigan by Savory Knitting. My plan is to knit a swatch with each of these and then I will decide what to spin. It's a whole process to wash a fleece in an apartment for sure. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing a little vlog of what that looks like. Just for anyone who's curious about <laughs> washing a sheep's fleece in a New York City sized bathroom. <laughs> with no backyard, nothing. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll pawn some off to my sister and she can, she can take it and process it and spin it for herself. That covers all the projects I wanted to chat about today. I have a lot of things that I'm like ruminating on um, but I'm also trying to embrace like slowness and 
patience and just really enjoying the process of all of the different aspects of this craft. Um, I feel like spinning and weaving have just opened up so many more avenues of like creativity for me that I, I'm just excited about it all. And, um, but that also feels very overwhelming because I wanna do everything like now, but the, I guess the beauty of knitting, spinning, weaving is that it is a craft that takes time and it really forces you to slow down and, you know, practice stillness and slowness and patience. I'm trying to remember that, especially as we live in a world, in a society that is go, go, go and consume, consume, consume. I'm trying to view this hobby and craft as just a personal act of <laughs> resistance towards that. I hope you worked on a project that is bringing you so much joy right now. And if you're going to Ryan back, please let me know. I doubt I will get another video up before Ryan back, but I will probably have some sort of recap vlog or little bits about it after Rhinebeck happens. Um, so yeah, if you're going, please let me know. I um, am very excited to like be around the knitting community. Everyone is just so nice and so fun and it's so inspiring. And if it's anything like last year, I just can't wait. So, yay! <laughs> so with that, I will let you go. I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy making. Thank you.